You've probably heard of the term cognitive dissonance, and you've probably also heard of the term paradox. But have you ever thought about the relationship between the two terms, or the two concepts? Because, I mean, on paper, they kind of look like they're the same thing, because dissonance would be defined as a lack of harmony. Cognitive dissonance would be uh, a lack of harmony between two beliefs, essentially saying that, you know, the two beliefs are conflicting, and cognitive dissonance, the term is often used to describe the feeling that we get when we are experiencing that lack of harmony. And it's not comfortable. And a paradox, like I said, on paper is very similar. A paradox is two conflicting beliefs that both appear to be true. Believers of a all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God, they have to square up the existence of that God with the existence of pain, suffering, and evil in this world. Like why would an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God allow that? And so that can produce, that paradox can produce cognitive dissonance. Okay, so the, the next section, I accidentally uh, disconnected my microphone and so I got no audio and so I need to quickly kind of try and restate or recap what I was talking about in that section. But what I was essentially saying was that, you know, cognitive dissonance is when our lived experiences conflict with our reality or when we learn something that contradicts our current understanding. And if that cognitive dissonance is strong enough, if it is impactful enough, it can lead to something that we've talked about before on this channel, which is uh, ontological shock. Our ontology is the way that we experience experience reality. We each have our own ontology. We each have our own lens through which we see reality. And the way we experience reality is ontology. And so ontological shock is what can happen when cognitive dissonance gets strong enough. And so the way I see it is that cognitive dissonance and paradox are essentially two sides of the same coin. But I think the key difference is that with paradox, you're not looking to resolve the issue. You see the two perceivably true beliefs, perceivably true concepts, and you hold them in tandem. You understand that there is a lack of understanding here, that your, your, the lens through which you see reality is not whole. It is not perfect. There is flaws to the way that we see reality. And when you have cognitive dissonance, it's because you want there to be clarity. You are uncomfortable in uncertainty. You're uncomfortable with the idea that you do not know everything. And so to me, the key difference between paradox and cognitive dissonance is a need for certainty. If you're able to sit in paradox comfortably, then that means that you do not need to believe that you know everything, that you do not need a perfect explanation for reality. And I think that's a mature approach. But I think there's also a shadow side to that. And the shadow side to paradox is that it can be a way that we essentially bypass critical thought. And I think that's incredibly unhealthy. Like, People will say like with theodicy, with the problem of evil, they will say, oh, it's just like, it's a paradox. I can't explain it. Or they'll say like, oh, it's just a mystery of God. And you know, maybe one day I'll understand it or something like that. And I, I think that is bypassing the paradox. Cause I think the paradox should bring humility. It should be, bring epistemological humility and epistemological humility would be the humility that comes with the understanding that we are the way that we perceive reality and the way that we know things is flawed what i'm trying to get at here and this is this is really hard to articulate what i'm trying to say is that as we embrace a paradox, I think we need to, number one, be okay with uncertainty. We need to be comfortable not knowing. 
But more importantly is that humility. It's bringing that humility and understanding that the way that we see reality, the way that we make sense is inherently flawed because we all, we all have our unique subjective experience and that shapes our reality. And so I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to switch back now to finish out the video with uh, on my run this morning. So I think that's the whole point that I'm trying to get at here is that cognitive dissonance that discomfort happens when you are absolutely certain of something and that certainty becomes immovable by making it part of your identity. And so I think that's the difference between holding a paradox in, in a beautiful way versus experiencing cognitive dissonance. Because in both scenarios, you're holding conflicting beliefs, but experiencing cognitive dissonance is when you need one of them to be right. And one of them can't be right because the other one is also right. And so as we approach these conflicting ideas, these contradictory beliefs that we hold, I think that there is one thing that can help us with that. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I love curiosity. And I, this seems to be another way that curiosity is the key. So if we can approach all of these things with a curious mindset, with, a, with an air of curiosity about us, then we will not only avoid the cognitive dissonance of needing one of them to be right or holding on to the belief that we have because we're curious, not only will we avoid that, but we'll also avoid the trap that people can fall in by bypassing critical thought with par by, by embracing paradox. Because if you're curious, and you look at the two contradictory beliefs, the paradoxical situation, you're not just gonna give up and say, oh, it's a paradox and just go with it. Curiosity will motivate someone to try and find the truth no matter where it is. And so this, once again, is another example of why I think being curious is one of the best things you can be, because it allows us to transcend through cognitive dissonance, allow for paradox, but it keeps us from experiencing the certainty that causes us to attach our identity to beliefs that will only keep us from the growth mindset that I think we're all looking for, at least I'm looking for, in order to awaken to a more true reality. So, once again, I am not an expert. I am just trying to figure this out and the idea of cognitive dissonance and paradox seemed to be a paradox in itself. And so I'm just, once again, thinking out loud on this. But uh, if this was interesting or thought provoking or anything, I'd love to hear your, your comments. Um, uh, but it, yeah, if that was interesting or helpful, uh, stick around and I'll catch you in the next video.